Let's talk about garbage collection in Emacs and how it can be improved. It's a basic mark and sweep algorithm, and as you can imagine, the bottleneck is the marking phase. You're doing a depth first search through all the objects in your system, which can number in the thousands, and that's going to take a while. So uh, the first order solution might be, well, let's do it incrementally. Let's not do it all at once. And so in your iterative loop over all the objects, you can mark some, yield back to the main evaluation loop, take care of reader's play, take care of user requests, and then come back at your leisure, continue on until your mark stack is empty. The problem with this solution is that while much work has been made to make this loop iterative, there's still a fair amount of recursion involved in the marking of objects. And so the C language doesn't quite allow you to go deep into the recursion, jump out of it, take care of user requests in the main loop, and then restore your recursive state uh, in the marking of the stack. So if you can't mark everything in the same thread, then let's mark things in a parallel thread. Obviously, that parallel thread can't keep on top of the new allocations being made in the main thread. So let's just ensure that in the main thread, uh, any interim allocations are conservatively and indiscriminately marked so that they can be selectively marked in subsequent cycles. Now, I can already think of an instance where the marking thread won't be able to atomically distinguish uh, allocations that it's working on and allocations that it's supposed to ignore because they are being produced concurrently by the main thread. Uh, databases are generally a problem. I don't think threading is the right solution for most problems, and particularly in the case of something as important and as mission critical as garbage collection, you really don't want to mess with threads. What if we took a divide and conquer strategy and introduced generational garbage collection? The idea here is we get 80% of the memory savings by spending just 20% of the time looking at the youngest cohort of list of objects in our hierarchy. One thing that this approach has going for it is that it's theoretically sound, it's been done many times in the past, and we know it works. The big drawback here is that it's just a ton of work moving from a non-moving garbage collector to a moving one. Now here, I hope, is for most of you what is a fairly familiar picture of how our current system works. List objects are carved out of these semi-large blocks that are located disparately in memory, all of them linked by these next pointers. When a list object gets reclaimed, like this gray area right here, it doesn't get repositioned or moved at all. All that happens is there's a pointer manipulation in the free list to register the fact that this location in memory is now available for reuse. In a moving collector, we have what are called the from space and the to space. The marking phase remains roughly the same, but in the sweep phase, we take all our live list objects in the from space and we copy and compact them into the to space in sequence. One of the much touted benefits of such a moving collector is you get spatial locality of your list objects after the garbage collection. So in generational garbage collection, we bisect our from space into an old generation and a new generation. And for our normal garbage collection cycles, we only scan from the roots of the new generation, which is much smaller than the entire from space. And this is a massive win for, the, for speed. But it doesn't come without a pretty sizable implementation cost, which is that it can very easily happen that an old object in the old generation spawns a reference to a list object in the new generation. And since we're only scanning roots in the new generation, we're going to end up losing that reference. We're going to end up losing that list object. Perhaps we could trap whenever an intergenerational reference occurs. One way of doing that is to appeal to the operating system, and this is where a moving collector's compaction really, really helps. We can cordon off the region memory corresponding to the old generation, such that any writes to it yields a segmentation fault, which we can trap and then act accordingly. Now I'd like to demonstrate some of commercial Emacs's baby steps towards a moving collector. For this demo, I need complete control over when garbage collection occurs, so I need to set GC counts threshold to effective infinity. The function GC counts provides statistics for the size and the number of allocations being made by the default non-moving collector for the various uh, native list types. There's now a new function MGC counts. This provides statistics for the moving garbage collector. And as you can see, since we haven't used it yet, uh, all those slots are currently zero. Now let's do something basic like make a string in the moving collector. MGC make string, which is just like the normal make string. It accepts a length and an initial character. So let's make the string length 10 with character x. So there's my string of 10 x's. Now let's see where we stand with the moving collector. MGC counts. MGC counts uh, dutifully reports one string. Now, since there's no reference to this string, it should be collected, right? So let's instigate a manual collection. Garbage collect. Now let's recheck MGC counts. And that string is now gone. Now let's demonstrate surviving a moving collection. Let's make the same string. But this time, we'll have a variable associated with it. We'll then run a manual garbage collect. And then we'll reprint out the statistics for the movement collector. And what should we expect here? Well, we're going to make the string associate with a variable called garbage collect. And since after the collection foo still exists, MGC counts should still contain that string. So let's see. 
and we'll see in the mini buffer that in fact the collection statistics show that that string has survived. Now that we're outside of the let closure, if we were to call garbage collect, since foo no longer exists, then that string will now be collected. That's when MGC counts. And in fact, we're starting from a clean slate again. Great. Now let's try something arbitrarily complex. Right, bar MGC cons MGC make symbol A MGC vector one two. Okay, now after this garbage collect, bar should still reference one cons, one symbol, this string A, and a vector. So let's see if the results bear that out. We see in the mini buffer one symbol, one string, one vector, and one cons. So it's all as expected. 